Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And for today's cards, I started out doing a background technique that Tim Holtz had shown a few months ago. And Jennifer McGuire did a very in-depth video about three, two or three months ago. And I will hopefully remember to link to it if you haven't seen it. Um, but basically it involves Distress Oxide inks, glossy cardstock, and the Distress Micro Glaze. You can use um, other types of glossy cardstock. It doesn't have to be the Ranger brand. I think you can use photo paper. I know in Jennifer's video, she used the alcohol ink cardstock, which I think is basically the same thing. It just needs to have a glossy surface. If you do the ink smushing technique like this on regular cardstock, you won't get the same effect. And it needs to be the oxides, not the regular distress inks. Um, I've done the ink smushing with distress inks over and over again in tons of videos. Loads of fun. But this one is just very unique. Because you do the ink smushing like I show here. I just was smushing my distress oxide inks onto the little craft mat that comes with my um, tonic glass mat. It doesn't have to be this one. You can use the Ranger one, etc. But I smushed my inks, sprayed them with water, and then I was pressing the glossy side of that cardstock into it. And you want to make sure you dry it between each layer. So this is where a heat tool comes in handy, otherwise you're going to be sitting around for a very long time waiting for this to dry. But each layer needs to be dry so that you can add more layers of the splatter and the color, etc. And it's up to you how many layers you want to add. I find the more the better because it's just fun. So I kept drying each layer. I was also using my little microfiber cloth just to pick up some of the excess and to speed along the drying process. And because this is glossy cardstock and these are Distress Oxide inks, the color just kind of soaks into the paper and it becomes very dull. And it looks kind of okay on camera, but in real life, it's very chalky looking. It's very dull. Um, it almost seems pointless, but this is where the micro glaze is going to come in and there's quite a trick to it. So I did about three layers. I never added any more ink. I just kept, you know, adding a bit of water and, you know, making it more splatter and pressing it in. And then once I had enough layers and I was happy with it, I actually sprayed it with my distress sprayer held fairly high up and then would dry it again with my heat tool. Just it adds a little bit more of a splatter effect because I purposely am trying to create more watery looking backgrounds. Um, I'll have to do more videos with this technique because it's actually, it's really fun. And I'm very curious to see how other colors work. Um, Tim Holtz, when he showed his, he used a bunch of different colors and it was just, it was amazing. Like it just, I went out and bought that micro glaze the second I saw his video. <laughs> so you make sure everything is dry. You're done with your layers. It looks like a hot mess. And this is where you take the micro glaze and they sized it perfectly to fit a blending tool. So I've got my little foam on my blending tool and you don't need a whole lot of the micro glaze and you just apply it over this cardstock and it just, it's like magic. It removes that chalky residue and it reveals all those layers. So I just rub it on and then I use that micro microfiber cloth just to kind of rub away any excess. And then this also does, this also makes this completely waterproof. So if you want to try and add anything on top of this, you can't. Like you can't add more inks or anything else. That micro glaze literally seals everything in and you, you're done. So there's other uses for it. I haven't used it for anything other than this technique, so I can't say a whole lot. But if you do some searching, um, there are other videos out there and techniques that you can use the micro glaze for. But so far, I really like it just for this. And this is also a nice alternative for people who really like the look of alcohol inks, but you don't, you either don't want to invest in them or you don't want to work with alcohol inks. This is kind of a similar look, but you know, without using the alcohol. So it's, and it's fun. So I did a second panel using several of the same colors, but instead of using the Twisted Citron, I used Shaded Lilac. So my first one was blues and a bit of green. And then the second one is blues with that little bit of purple. And it just a completely different look. So I did the exact same thing, smushing the inks, pressing the cardstock into it, and then drying each layer with my heat tool before pressing it back into what remained of the ink and the splatters and whatnot on my craft mat. And then making sure to kind of clean up my mess here because I've got like ink and water. It's all over me. My hands are stained. I, I had loads of fun. I wanted to do more, but 
I, as always, I'm like running short on time. So again, I pick up some of that distress, uh, micro glaze on my blending tool and I applied it just a half here. So you can kind of see how it just reveals the glossiness and all those layers. Whereas the side without any distress glaze is very chalky and dull and it will, the distress oxidings will kind of remove because it is a glossy surface until you apply that distress glaze. I haven't had a problem with the oxides on other cardstocks, you know, distress, distress watercolor paper, etc. But when you're using it with the glossy, you pretty much need this distress glaze. I don't know if there's other products out there that would work similarly. I'm, there's, I'm sure there are that I'm just not aware of. So I did those two backgrounds. And then to make these into cards, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Summer Cuddly Critters stamp set that is just so adorable. So I pulled out all of the images from the set and I am lining them up onto some Nina. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I'm using my little travel stamp platform here so I can stamp all the images at once as well as stamp them multiple times so that I get a really crisp black outline for all these images. And then I also mult stamped multiple times the little starfish and the little heart in the set. So I had extras of them and plus to just use up those, you know, open areas of cardstock. So stamped everything with Simon's Intense Black Ink, which is a Copic friendly black ink. And then I got to coloring all of these in with my Copic markers. So I've sped up the coloring because it took a while and I used a ton of Copics. Um, I'm going to list all the colors I used um, here on the screen. I will have a picture on my blog as well because I did actually write them all down this time um, showing all of the colors that I used. But I started with the kitty cat and did him in little orange sort of shades and created little stripes. And then for the starfish, I used two of the same um, orange colors just uh, the two darker ones. And then I added the third, the YR27 there, just to really deepen it up a bit and colored all of those in. And then once I was kind of happy with how those looked, I went on and started coloring the puppy dog. And for him, I ended up using some more neutral browns for the dog. So I started with his little ears. I thought he'd look cute if his ears were a little bit darker. So his ears and the main parts of his body are a little bit darker. I left the little center part of his little tummy there that I'll only use the two lighter colors on just to give it that, again, a little bit of definition, keep it a little bit lighter. So I was working, I kind of go back and forth on all these images. I, for years now, I've been go working like darkest to lightest because it's just a form of laziness on my part. Um, you have more control if you work lighter to darker with Copic markers because um, you can't take away the dark. So if you work lightest to darkest, you have a little bit more control and there's less chance of like oversaturating with the dark. But I just more often than not, I've started, you know, use going darkest to lightest because it's just faster. <laughs> but with this, these images, I literally, I go back and forth. I go lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. It just, whatever works for you. Really, there is no right or wrong way. Like you color however it works for you. So I colored in the puppy dog and then I used the darkest of those browns to add little dots just for some texture. And then I went in and did the same thing, those little starfish. I added little dots with that darkest orange to add a little bit of texture. And then I used the same pinks that I was using for the centers of the ears, which is my go-to, my R20 and R22. And I used those for the hearts as well as for one of the stripes on this beach ball because this beach ball, it's just, I just had to do it in rainbow order. It... I don't know. So I used the same ones, but I also pulled in R24 to give it a deeper color. And with these, I worked lightest to darkest. It just was what I was doing. So did all that. And I ended up using those same colors to do the little flamingo floaty that the puppy dog is in, which I just, it just cracks me up. These images are adorable. So I did the exact same thing, used the exact same colors and left that center area lighter to give it more of a highlight. So it looks a little bit more round on this flamingo. And then kind of went back and forth to get those colors really nice and give it a good smooth blend. And then after I was done coloring the flamingo, this is when I really start pulling out a ton of markers because I want to do rainbow order on the beach ball. I go completely nuts on the cat's mermaid tail here. I just, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I couldn't make up my mind. So I ended up adding so many colors to this tail. It was kind of insane. I started with greens 
and added a bit of green. And then I started adding some blue greens because I wanted them to fade into each other, which was fine. They faded into each other really nicely. Just kind of worked back and forth to work those colors into each other. And I kept going back to that tail and adding more colors and adding dots and different things until I ended up ended up with what I ended up with. So that's kind of the beauty of Copic markers is a lot of times you can keep fiddling with it because they're transparent and just keep layering colors and it just ends up working in the end. So I stuck at first with just the green and the blue green and then um, I started using purples on the little shells, the little shell bra. Oh, this cracks me up. So use purples on that working from just darkest to lightest. And while I was doing these, I would go and color in another stripe on that um, beach ball. And then I was also adding, I decided to add some purple into that mermaid tail because, you know, there just wasn't enough color. So I did that. And then um, the umbrella, I just colored with yellows because I pulled out yellows to do that one tiny little bit of the beach ball as well as a little star in um, next to the cat's ear there. So colored the umbrella with the really bright yellows. And then I'd use the greens on the stripe and those same blue greens as well. And then I brought in some oranges to finish off that beach ball. And then I ended up using the lightest orange to color in the part of the flamingo floaties beak. I actually used the yellow orange and the R20 and layered those together and they just worked. And then again, this mermaid tail, I just kept adding color, adding dots, adding texture. I couldn't make, I just kept going. More and more and more and more. In the end, I, I was okay with it. But on, I was just kind of frustrating myself because it just wasn't... I didn't know what I wanted, so I added everything. So kept adding little dots and whatnot with um, the purples and the blues and the greens to the mermaid tail. And then finally, like, left it alone. So I layered those two, that pink and that orange, on the little floaty. And then I pulled out some cool gray markers to add um, the little dot to the cat's nose, as well as the rest of the beak on the floaty, and then the dog's sunglasses here. I'm using really dark grays for this, and just using two. Um, blending those together, adding a bit more of the darkest. And then I'm going to use lighter grays to do just that little dot on the beach ball as well as the stand for the umbrella. So add those and then I'm finally done with all of this coloring. So the last little step, I took my colorless blender, the Zero Copic marker, and just kind of pushed back in some of the color that I, you know, I went outside the lines with. And then I took a Jelly Roll pen. Usually I use a Uniball white pen, which I love. For whatever reason today, neither of mine worked. I have two of them. They weren't working. So I pulled out this Jelly Roll pen that I just recently got. This is the new one. That's the size 10, like the really bold one. And added, started adding highlights, started adding dots, and went to town with that and just added a ton. So added dots to the mermaid's tail and little highlights and added dots to the little starfish. The only places I didn't add any highlights to was the hearts, the sunglasses, and the beach ball because I plan on covering those with crystal glaze. And I have found that um, glossy accents or crystal glaze, anything like that, if you have a white gel highlight on it, the I, I don't know if the glossy accents like eats it. I don't know what happens. It just dissolves. It disappears. It's the weirdest thing. So if you want to add white highlights, I would wait until it's completely dry, which is what I'm going to do. So I knew I was going to add the crystal glaze to those images. So those ones I didn't add any white highlights to. I just left them. And then I die cut all of these images with the coordinating wafer dies. So I'm just going to tape everything into place with little bits of washi tape so that these don't shift when I run them through my Gemini machine. And I also die cut those backgrounds I created in the beginning. And I had die cut those with the largest of the Simon wonky rectangles dies. So ran everything through, die cut all of these images. I, and then um, after I die cut the main ones, I went through and die cut all those little hearts. And I would have done this, I should have done this before I die cut, but hindsight. Um, I pulled out my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen, so it's just clear shimmer, and added that to just about everything as well. Like, everything got highlights, everything got shimmer, crazy backgrounds with the Distress Oxides, everything. Like, these cards, I went all out. I was just having so much fun with them. So I painted on that shimmer on pretty much 
everything and I'll show at the end I'll put the flashlight on my phone so you can actually see how glittery these are I absolutely love this Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pen. It's very similar to the Wink Stella and the Spectrum Noir one I've used off and on over the years. The Wink Stella is more gold shimmer and the Spectrum Noir one is definitely clear like this one. So it's, I would con compare this one to the Spectrum Noir. And they're all similar in the sense that they look very... You don't really see the sparkle until the light hits it and then the sparkle just hits you in the face. It's I love it. Love it. So I've got my backgrounds there that I die cut and then I kind of laid out the images and then the sentiments so I could kind of have an idea of what I wanted to do and then took a picture with my phone so that I could remember where I'd placed everything. And for the sentiments, the sentiments that are in that summer Cuddly Critter stamp set and I'm going to heat emboss those onto these backgrounds. So I'm going to line them up with my stamp platform here and then I'm going to use liberally use my anti-static powder tool because I don't want the embossing powder sticking to anything but the sentiment. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiments with Simon's Clear Embossing Ink. And then I'm going to use Simon's Detail White Embossing Powder to um, cover those sentiments and then melt them with my heat tool. So I do that to both backgrounds using um, one sentiment for each here. And then once those are all smooth and melted, I can start assembling these card fronts. So I used a variety of adhesives to adhere everything. I was using little Doris foam strips for some of the little tiny areas and then my little 3D foam squares. Um, I'll have a link to everything that I used in the description box below the video as well as on my blog. So I just went along and adhered everything. The only thing I didn't adhere with dimension was the hearts because they were smaller. So those I'm just going to adhere with little dabs of um, multi-medium matte adhesive. So just add little dabs of that and then I'm going to press that onto um, my card front. So once I've got everything adhered, I completely covered the back of these card fronts with foam tape and adhered them to my card bases, which were uh, four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding cards. And they're made out of the Nina 110 pound cardstock. So got my card friends adhered to the card bases with all that foam tape. And then of course I have to finish the insides of my cards. So I pulled out two more Distress Oxide inks. Um, one in a kind of a similar color to the cat. So this is uh, Wild Honey. So I stamped the cat with Wild Honey Distress Oxide ink. And I stamped the puppy dog with Abandoned Coral Distress Oxide ink. And then once I have those stamped, I'm gonna stamp a couple more sentiments from the Summer Cuddly Critter set and the sentiments I'm going to stamp with Simon's Intense Black Ink. And then once I have those stamped, there's a bunch of little bubble images in this stamp set. So I just put those on a couple of acrylic blocks and I'm just going to stamp them randomly on the insides of these cards with, I think I used the Mermaid Lagoon ink for that. So I wanted to use those bubbles. I thought they were so cute. And rather than heat emboss them on the outside, I just couldn't be bothered. I had enough going on in that background, but then I'm going to add a ton of other stuff to the background. So my thought process, it's like more is more. So after, after I've done that, I'm going to add a ton, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, a ton of Nouveau crystal drops to the background because it just, it's fun and I can't stop it like a couple. So I used the white blizzard one, which is clear with glitter, which is just fun. And then I added some gloss white, some carnation pink, some dandelion yellow, some Caribbean ocean, just going around and just adding all different sizes of dots. And while they're still wet, I heavily tap this against um, just an ink pad, your work surface, whatever. It helps kind of smooth them out a little bit and makes them look more like enamel dots. And then I very carefully added crystal glaze to the hearts and whatnot, um, making sure not to smear those Nouveau drops. And I did not realize until I'm editing this video, I forgot to add crystal glaze to the one heart right above the cat. I added it to the star. I added it to everything else, but I, f I left out that one heart. I have the card sitting beside me right now and I don't know what I was thinking. So anyway, added crystal glaze to the hearts, to the little star by the cat's ear, to this beach ball and then to the sunglasses on the puppy dog. So everything's gonna be super glossy and because I've got the crystal glaze and these Nouveau drops, this needs to dry um, for 24 hours to be completely dry. So I'm going to set these aside to fully dry, not touch them, 
not smear, nothing. And once they're completely dry, I can now go back in and add the highlights with my white gel pen right over top of that glossy accents or crystal glaze. So added that, and even when I added the white gel pen, I still did not realize that that one heart, like I added the highlight with the white gel pen over it and still didn't realize that there's no crystal glaze on it, but whatever. Um, yeah. So added all the little highlights with my white gel pen, and that's going to finish off these very, I guess you can call it labor intensive cards. There was a lot going on with them, but they were just, it was literally the funnest thing ever to do these backgrounds and color these images and add all this gloss and shine and sparkle and it's just they were just fun so um this is part of a blog hop this is day two of a very big blog hop for the simon says stamp good vibes release so i will have links on my blog to the other participants there's giveaways um, there's a coupon code, all kinds of stuff. So check out my blog, which I will have the post link directly below this video. I will also have, of course, all the supplies used, etc. That will all be linked um, below as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye.